All right, welcome back. Same great episode, same great outfits. Rick and Brett here for another edition of the Paper Stack Snackables. You got some good ones in here lately, and this one's kind of interesting. You're you're wanting to know the do's and don'ts of property preservation, right? Well, I figured, you know, we're going, to, it's the holiday season, right? And <laughs> during the holiday season, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, it gets a little cold. And there's a lot of things with property preservation you need to make sure that you do around these times if you haven't done already. And so, yes, if you haven't done the, uh, you know, the winterization of the pipes, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? Um, let's talk a little bit. We'll just talk a little bit winterization of pipes. Anything that where you have hold water on, pipes. Hold on, before you get going that far, tell the people that are maybe new to note investing. What do we what are we talking about with property preservation? What does that mean? So property preservation, as a lender, you have the legal right to preserve your property to make sure it doesn't get dilapidated, damaged, anything like that in the event that it's non-performing or it's vacant. Right, so these are just for non-performing and vacant houses. Correct. Right. Non-performing okay. vacant houses. That you own. Right, that, well, you own the asset. Right, yeah. The, the, the mortgage. Right. You can do certain things to make sure that the property is you know in good standing, doesn't acquire liens or um, code violations, stuff along those lines. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what property preservation is. And it can range anything from mowing the lawn to changing the locks, to boarding up the windows, to tarping the roof, to winterizing the pipes. Yeah. Explain winterizing the pipes. Like I've heard that and uh, of course, you know, we're down here in Florida, so don't know what that means. Yeah, so winterizing the pipes. What will happen is um, we got pipes that carry water whether it's to the, the shower, the sinks, the toilets, whatever. And if there's water in there and it gets freezing outside and stays freezing for long enough, eventually what happens is those pipes freeze up and the water inside them freezes up. What happens to water when it freezes? It expands. It expands, that's right. And if you've got a pipe full of water and it's capped on either end and it expands, well, the only thing the water can do is break the pipe. And so what'll happen is, is you'll have pipes that burst. And so you won't know that they burst until everything thaws out and you go to turn on the water and your house floods. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, you don't, no. want that, you don't want that to happen. No, and if it's a vacant house and the house floods, do you think you find out right away? Nope. No, you sure don't. Normally you find out um, if the water's on, You'll find out once you get your first water bill or there's water pouring out. Um, Let me ask, so as, you know, just plain somebody doesn't know, when you have a vacant house, wouldn't you, wouldn't ideally you want to turn the water off? Yeah, most of the time the water is off. Really? Okay. Yeah, the water's off. So you would still, though, just winterize it just yeah. in case? Yeah, and so what they do is they blow all the pipes out. They get all the, they get all the water out of the pipes, they get all, and, and so there's no water in there, it's just air. They, they, they winterize the property. And that's how they do it. Yeah, that's how they do it. And they you know, remove water from there. I think they pour some stuff in the drains. Um, I don't know, I've never actually been there for it, but I know when we used to winterize our cabin up in Michigan, you take an air compressor and blow out the pipes. Really? Oh, wow. Get rid of all the air, or get rid of all the water. So that way there's nothing there to expand, freeze and expand. So that is, it definitely falls under the do side of, and you wanna do this usually in the winter time, or in the fall, really, like, you know, September, October is when you would go in there and do it. Sometimes people do it as early as July, August, start winterizing, but. Interesting. You wanna get that done, you wanna get it done as soon as possible so you don't, you know, spend 100 bucks to winterize a property, and next thing you know, if you don't spend that, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to fix it. That's interesting. Yep. You always wanna have the yard most time mode. mode. You want to keep the yard mode, right? So the county, that's county might be, uh, less of an issue in the winter mm -hmm. up north because grass dies, it doesn't grow. In the summertime or in the spring, late uh, late summer, it, it's it's still an issue, and grass can grow quickly. And what will happen is, you know, you get neighbors complaining. City comes in, they start issuing fines, they start issuing code violations, and it's just more money that you have to cost. So you have to figure in sort of, you know, as part of your property preservation is going in and making sure the lawn is kept up, the bushes are trimmed, yard free from debris and trash, and that will happen. People find out your house is vacant and they've got a bunch of stuff that they need to get rid of, your yard becomes the dump. <laughs> 
Really? Even if it's in their own, neighbor, in their own neighborhood? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, in more affluent neighborhoods? No. No. Lower, you know, lower, less affluent neighborhoods? Um, yes, that becomes an issue. Wow. So it is what it is. Um, some of the other things you want to make sure to do. If you've got broken windows, doors off the hinges, stuff along those lines, you should go in and fix it. Like, I would say board it up if need be, or use, there's a clear plexiglass material you can use that will go ahead and it looks like windows, um, but you wanna secure your property. You wanna make sure the property is secured. What you don't wanna do is, if there's somebody in the house, you don't wanna go change the locks. You don't wanna change the locks on that. That's a, that's a no-no. Yeah, they might not like that. No. If the house has been vacant, you want to check with your local ordinances, check with your, the local laws to make sure, you, you, for the most part, you can go on there and secure the property and make sure that it's not just open for people to come in and vandalize. Right. I know. And there's one story, the tangent of the episode, is that the one time that you were telling me about, you and TJ had put some kind of tripwire because someone was trying to get in the back door and you had done something with a floodlight. Oh, yeah. That's There's like certain a- things you can do for, you know, this was post foreclosure. We took the property back. We fixed it up. And it was just prior to us putting in the appliances. Somebody tried to break in. And so what we had to do, they actually did break in. They didn't do anything, though. They think they were just some kids wanting to get in there, I think fool around, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so what we did is we created our, you know, we made sure the power was on. We secured the place. We put something on the back door that if they opened the back door, it would make this god-awful sound, this <laughs> alarm. We put in motion sensors that were tied to floodlights. So if something, and we had the floodlights in the windows, so, and then we put, you know, blinds up throughout the whole house so you couldn't see inside, and we put music, or we put a radio on that was blasting music, and we actually rented a car for a little while and parked it in the front did you really? Parked it in the driveway. So if anybody was coming around, like if you walked in the backyard, it like the floodlights just just shined at you and blinded you from inside the house. Um, it was all tied to motion sensors. And if you walked by, you, you hear like Metallica blasting on the radio. <laughs> the radio, which you couldn't see inside because we had the blinds all done. So, and there was a car there. So. Never had another problem after that, and it was a it was a really cheap security system we built. I mean, it was that's pretty cool though. I think you know, with the car rental, and so this it was a while ago. So with the car rental, which was half the price, was two hundred fifty bucks, and so all in. Oh yeah, it was because the lights were cheap, the motion sensors were cheap, everything was cheap to make. I mean, you bought a, a six dollar radio, just turned the radio, yeah, so it was super cheap. But it worked and kept people out of the house. Because otherwise they would have probably broken and stolen like a fridge or something. To get. Who knows? I don't know what they were going to do. But it was, you know, it keeps them away from the air conditioner, keeps away from the house, keeps them away from it. So that was sort of our own property preservation um, strategy. Huh? Strategy we did because otherwise it was like, you know, we we're going to have to buy a, a security system for fifteen hundred dollars. And who knows if, you know, when that could have got installed and all that stuff and had to pay monthly. Con- it's just like, uh, we'll just spend, you know, $125 on a car that we can rent for a week or two. I mean, that's just brilliant, though. You should have you should have put some, like, some junk mail on the front doorstep. Oh, uh, I mean, we, we did everything. It was, the house was good, though. So we ended up doing that. It that's was, pretty cool. Yep. So that was, that's our own. And you got to think out the, outside the box sometimes. You can't just... Yeah. Go there. You gotta. You gotta think and say. Well, what? Di- what would keep people away from here? Like, I wouldn't try to go into a house where there's music blasting and floodlights and all that stuff, and there's a car in the driveway. I don't want to get shot. So, yeah, I mean, you should also have like the sound of like a Doberman barking every thirty minutes. <laughs> we actually almost went and bought a. Uh, we looked at renting security guard dogs. Really? Yeah, we were worried about them like shitting and pissing all over the house. So we were like, <laughs> that was. <laughs> and then if somebody did get in there, we we're like, well, what if these, they did actually get in and these dogs ate them or, or killed them? <laughs> then it's like, now we've got a homicide on our hands. And it's like, uh, we'll just do the radio. And the. We did weigh these options though. So you have Metallica's to. Metallica's pretty scary though. Yeah, you run through, you run through a bunch of different scenarios and then you're like, oh, this is a cool idea. And then you're like, ooh. 
but it ended up badly. And we're like, let's just do this. This seems like, a, you know, kind that of a happy medium. So, <laughs> Anybody hear Metallica over and Yeah, over so that was definitely, I mean, that would be a do. Figure out, think outside the box. Um, and that would be for more once you've, you know, maybe you've got the property back and you fixed it up and you don't want something just wrecking it. Um, what are some other things, you know, it, once you get the property back, change the locks. Yeah. Always change the locks. If if you took it back through foreclosure and you leave the old lock on there, even if the borrower signed the house over you, change the locks. If you are renting it out, you're going to sell it now and it's going to sit vacant, change the locks. Because you want to be the only ones that have had keys to that lock. That's just... That's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Well, good. Those are a lot of good tips. I think... Uh, uh, if if you find out that there's a a leak, like you look up and you have somebody go through and they're going to do a, um, you know, take pictures of the inside. That's another thing. The key to property preservation is knowing what you're working with. So have pictures of the outside of the house. Have pictures of the inside of the house. You can never have too many pictures. If it's vacant and you can get photos of it, get it. If you see an area where there's a leak, go ahead and throw, throw a tarp at it. Tarp the roof. Pay to have the roof tarped. The entire roof. Or just over that area. Where the area, where the leak is. Yeah. You know, that way you don't have further damage caused. That's smart. Um, I would not do any repairs to a property until we have title to that property. Like, so for instance, you know, I'll, I'll fix a window to keep people out or board it up. But I'm not going to go put a roof on there until we actually have title to the property. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, so there's a lot of little things you do, but you want to secure your assets, make sure they're protected. Are there companies out there that can help them with that? Absolutely. There are tons of companies that do just property preservation. You can go to the Bag Network, Dickie Baldwin. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple other ones that, that, that do, I can't think of, Prop, Prop Pres or something like that. We can put links to the other ones in the show notes here. But, yeah, there's a lot of them out there that'll do it, and they have all these... They have order forms, and you wouldn't be, you'd be, there's so many different things that they offer. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's something. That's but property awesome. preservation is big. Yeah, because that could really uh, screw you up if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, cool. That's the property preservation um, just to cover because it's cold, and I thought about the, the pipes. Pipes burst, and you don't, you don't want that to happen. Have you ever had that happen? No. No? I've heard about it. I've not had it. What's the worst you heard? Oh, just... I mean, if you burst one pipe, there's a chance you've burst them all, and so you have to replumb the entire house. And not only that, but you're you have mold in the walls at that point, huh? Could have mold mold in the walls, yeah. If you've got mold in the walls, then I mean, oh, just a nightmare. <laughs> just an <laughs> absolute. I don't want to talk about it. It's like knock on wood, rub my fingers together, click, click, click. I don't even want to think about it. All right, we'll stop talking about it. All right, well, that's all that we got for this episode. We'll see you on the next one. See ya.